All right, so the EverDrive GB. This video's not gonna be too long because this thing's pretty straightforward. Um, these EverDrives are pretty simple to use. I've got a 16 gigabyte S micro SD card in this thing. And um, the first thing I did was stick it in the Game Boy, um, just stick the SD card blank in the Game Boy and then stick the EverDrive in the Game Boy and turn it on. Sometimes the EverDrive itself wants to format the card for the first time and that might put the appropriate folders on there. Or at least so I thought. Uh, what ended up happening was I got this message on the Game Boy screen. So I basically just followed those instructions, got the required file, put that file on the SD card, and then turned it on again. And it looked like it was working at that point, but obviously there was no games on it. So, I copied um, basically some folders. I'll just turn it on and show you here. So this is what we see when it turns on. And uh, I've got basically several folders here. Let me just zoom in a little bit. got the eight free Game Boy games that it came with so when you buy the EverDrive uh, it you get a link to download these eight free games from what I understand some of these games are games that were never released um, so yeah they were completed back in the day but never got released so that's kinda cool you can check those games out I'll just show you there what the list looks like I uh, can't say I'm really too familiar with any of these games although I gotta say Radical Rex there certainly sounds familiar but I put two folders on here, one for Game Boy and one for Game Boy Color. You can have up to a thousand games in one folder. So if you've got, you know, less than a thousand games and you don't want to separate them by folders, you can do that. Um, I've got about 500 games uh, in the Game Boy folder and about 500 games in the Game Boy Color folder. Um, if you press select, it brings up this menu. You've got previously played games. You can just play a random game. You've got cheats, um, device info. The diagnostics will run like a, a test on the RAM and the ROM. It takes about a minute to do that. I've got some about information there. And uh, in options, you can actually swap A and B, which is pretty crazy. I don't know how they managed to do that. Um, anyways, let's go into Game Boy, and let's just pick a random game here. Uh, let's do a game that we know has a battery backup, and off the top of my head, maybe Wario Land, we'll do Wario Land too. So click on that. We're going to say select and start. And that's it. It's pretty quick with the flash, as you can see. It resets the Game Boy because it does have to do the... does have to do the Nintendo sort of uh, check. It's like a security check. So it always resets the Game Boy after you pick a game. But it's pretty quick. And I can't skip this, can I? <laughs> this takes forever. Let's reset it. Hey, here's a little secret. How did I do that? Well, there's actually a little button right here that will reset the Game Boy. Um, so if you actually just push here, it actually acts like a button. So I'm going to go back. Let's pick something that will be quicker. Ninja Turtles 3. Does that have battery backup? I don't think it does. Um, Super Mario Land 2 does, but I already started playing that on here. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you that instead. Select and start. 
Again, it's pretty quick as you can see there, but it does have to reset the Game Boy so we get the Nintendo ba ding again. So again, I've already started playing this, um, so I guess that's fine. We'll use that to uh, save game. Actually, uh, yeah. maybe I'll just, whoops, I'll just die. <laughs> This game only saves when you beat a level, I'm assuming. There's no way to manually save. Just when you beat a level, it saves. Now I wonder... If we go into here, do a game... Alright, so now we're fire firepower, Mario. And then I'll go to Turtle Zone. Start this level. And, you know, this has a, an FPGA uh, processor in it. And so, you know, they're not cheap, but they do what they're supposed to do with very little issues. <laughs> All right, so we beat the, the first level on Turtle Zone. So I'll turn it off. I'll pull that out. Take another good look at it. Pop it back in. Turn that back on. I've never tried the recent uh, selection, so we'll see how that works now. If we go to Recently Played, Super Mario Land 2 is the last one in the list, of course, or the first one in the list. And there we are. So, I mean, that saved without me having to do anything. It's basically just as if you had the real game and it's seamless, like I said. Uh, let's reset it, so I'll show you that again. Just press there. You can kind of feel it click. And I'm going to try a Game Boy Color game to show you what happens there. So, a game that we know is Game Boy Color only. We'll go to uh, uh, Super Mario Deluxe. Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. Now, I like what they did here. So, in your list, a lot of times it's going to get cut off because the titles are so long. But at the bottom there, it looks like you got like three rows where if it's a really long title, um, you're always going to see the full title there. So I like the way they did that. The menu is very quick, um, but uh, you can get full titles there. So we'll load up Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Again, that was pretty quick. The Game Boy's going to reset. And of course, it says this game will only work in a Game Boy Color. That's what we expected. So again, this works with Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Basically, think of it like a Game Boy Color cartridge. So I've got my Game Boy Color out here. I haven't tried it in here yet, but realistically, it's going to work. <laughs> oh, cool. Green text. So we will go to... Actually, let's bring up the recently played again and do Super Mario Brothers Deluxe again and there we go there's a Game Boy Color game working as we would expect and this game also has battery backup doesn't it so let's go make a new file again another Look at that beautiful cartridge. I love the way that silk screen on there. And it just feels quality. It feels like a feels like a real Game Boy Color cartridge. No, it's not. Because I don't think it is. No, it's not, because it has the notch up top. Um, so that it will turn on in an original Game Boy. 
So it's like a Game Boy Color cartridge with the notch of an original Game Boy cartridge. Again, the Game Boy has to reset every time it plays a game because that's part of the security check for the like the ROM and the BIOS of the Game Boy. It does like a security check there. Yep, there we go. So again, it's basically seamless. It just happens. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about um, you know copying that to the SD card. I think it does that automatically. Uh, it just works. So yeah, in a Game Boy, in a Game Boy Color, obviously in a Game Boy Pocket. This is a pink Japanese Game Boy Pocket. Ooh, it's tight. Huh. It's worryingly tight in a Game Boy Pocket. Oh, my contrast is not set. Or the camera is just not digging this one. What's happening here? Oh, that's volume. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay, so this was only going to load Game Boy games, obviously. Let's hit up Adventure Island. Oh, that was really quick. Again, it resets. And there we go. So that seems to work fine. It's just a little tight uh, fitting into the Game Boy Pocket cartridge slot for some reason. It's really tight. Oh, wow. That's a little strange. Not, is it like that with... Is it, it wasn't tight in the Game Boy Color cartridge slot. Let me grab another Game Boy Pocket. I really doubt it's that just that Game Boy Pocket. No, it's really tight. Really tight in the Game Boy Pocket. But that's a little strange, but it works. So, I mean, if that worries you, keep that in mind. Um, Game Boy Advance. Ooh, yeah, it's tight. Actually, yes. It's, it's a little tight in the Game Boy Advance, but it's not like super tight like it was in the Game Boy Pocket. Personally, I like it in this Game Boy for me. It's got the clear kind of smoke cartridge and a clear smoke <laughs> Game Boy um, DMG uh, shell. And again, um, it's got the kind of shape of a Game Boy Color cartridge, but it's notched so that the power will work. So anyways, yeah, that's the Game Boy EverDrive. Um, of course, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I didn't even read the instructions for it, to be honest. Uh, other than the first time I turned it on and the instructions came up on the screen as to putting that like OS file onto the SD card. Uh, and then I pretty much just went for it, copied the Game Boy and Game Boy Color uh, folders. So these are some of the games that it came with, uh, eight free games when you buy uh, EverDrive GB from Stone Age Gamer. And uh, you know, he went out of his way to get the rights to use these games, so it's completely legal and official. And again, I believe these are, I don't know if they're all games that were never released, or some of them are. But, uh, Kind of a generic platforming game. The graphics are pretty decent. <laughs> it moves pretty quick. Geez, I wouldn't want to play it on a, <laughs> on a real DMG screen moving that quick. The one you want the IPS screen for, or some sort of a modded screen. Anyways, that's the Game Boy EverDrive, EverDrive GB. Um, I literally just learned that, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a tight fit in a, a pocket. And really tight fit in a pocket. Perfect in a Game Boy Color. A little tight in a Game Boy Advance, but um, it should work fine in my GBA. But I didn't try it, so my GBA doesn't have batteries in it. So let me pull the batteries out of my pocket, or my color, sorry. The color is two double A's. And the uh, advanced there's two double A's. Look 
looks like it should just act like a Game Boy Color with the typical fact that your LNR does your scaling stretching on a GBA. That's all just normal Game Boy stuff. That's got nothing to do with the EverDrive. So let's load up a Game Boy Color game. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. That didn't work. Let's reset that. Oh, the reset didn't work either. Hmm. Turn that off and turn that on, and we'll try that again. Maybe it's just that Game Boy Color game. Let me try a different Game Boy Color game. <laughs> it's racing. Let's give that a try. There we go. That seemed to work. Reset the Game Boy into Game Boy Color Mode. Yeah, that seems to be working just fine as a Game Boy Color game, as we can see. They're very colorful. Sure looks pretty good. <laughs> you can scale that up. Or you can leave it stock. Ooh, look at this. Super colorful. <laughs> no idea what's going on. It's like RC Pro AM looking through the camera. That's way too fast to try and play. It looks pretty good though. Yeah. So obviously works in uh, every Game Boy here. Just really tight on the uh, pocket and a little tight on the advance, but. Um, Again, for me, it's mostly going to be for the Game Boy, uh, Game Boy DMG and the and the color. I never noticed there's an LED on there flashing. So is that is like flashing when it's loading the SD card or something? I assume. Anyways, it it works perfectly fine. Other than it's a little tight in the pocket, works in the uh, works in the pocket, works in the color, works in the advance. So, yeah, pretty much everything <laughs> you would expect. Uh, surprising it was a little tight in the um, in the pocket. Now, I don't know if that would be different. Like, when you order this, you, you know, there's different color options. There's different cartridge kind of case options that you have. So, <laughs> maybe that's just this one. I don't know. It works fine. It's a little tight. It seems to be getting a... <laughs> This is, you notice it really taking it out. I mean, it's tight, but it works. No big deal. I think uh, it works perfectly fine. Super easy to use. Really as expected. Um, save states are just seamless. Not save states, I should say. Battery backup saves are basically seamless. So, there you go. If it bothers you that it's too tight in a, in a pocket, um, then maybe see if different case options uh, fix that I mean um, depending I think where you order it from as far as I know when this is made in the Ukraine um, you know the guy that makes it just makes the board and so the case that it's been put in and the sticker that's on it is um, you know an, an option from Stone Age Gamer so maybe ordering a different case or putting it in your own case I guess you could pull that out and put that in your own case couldn't you You'd lose access. You'd have to cut a slot for the uh, for the SD card, right? But I mean, the, the PCB should fit. The screw hole's in the same spot. So I mean, yeah, you could always put that in your own case. It looks like that would fit, no problem. And then cut a slot if you wanted for the SD card, or just throw the SD card. Once you got every game on there. Fit every damn Game Boy game ever made <laughs> from every region onto one SD card and then stick it in there. And you'd be good to go. So, yeah, that just might just be a slight issue with this color or this version of this case from Stone Age Gamer. Or the case from Stone Age Gamer and not necessarily from uh, an issue with the EverDrive. Because, again, when these are made in the Ukraine, I believe they aren't in a case. It's just a PCB and normally you can buy just a PCB and put it in your own case and sometimes that's cheaper or depending on where you buy it they're putting it in different cases so 
that's not really even an issue with the EverDrive, I don't think. Um, but it works, nonetheless. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, see you guys later.